Glomerulonephritis used to keep me awake at night. I used to memorize it by buzzwords. It haunted my dreams because I just didn't understand it. Let's learn it. In medicine, there's this simple idea called an illness script. It kind of refers to the idea that every disease kind of plays out like a movie. It should follow a script, in fact. When it comes to glomerulonephritis, there's a specific illness script for this disease as well. And the illness script of glomerulonephritis, especially acutely, usually follows this. First, dysmorphic RBCs. We'll see a picture of it in just a minute, but this means they're misshapen. Second is RBC casts because they filtered through and clogged into tubules. Three is proteinuria. Four is hypertension. And lastly, you may or may not have AKI. Now those dysmorphic RBCs, here's what they look like. These are not the same dysmorphic RBCs you see in schistocytes. This is a blebbing of the membrane. And this bleb happens because as these cells that pass freely through the podocytes, they weren't squeezed, they pass freely. When they dip into the loop of Henle, they bleb out because of the osmotic shifts. There's a picture of what a cast looks like. And lastly, in clearing up the proteinuria, it's important to understand there's a lot of overlap between nephritic and nephrotic, and not all diseases strictly follow one, but we're usually t talking subnephrotic range, but some nephritic diseases can get nephrotic range. So the question lingers, how do you suspect this clinically? Because you can memorize those things, but how do you do this in front of a patient? Well, as I like to sometimes say, there's some rules when it comes to defining AKI. And my rule of AKI, the first and only, is you don't talk about AKI without a UA. It's a biopsy. You have to look at what's happening in the urine. When people refer to a bland UA, what they mean is that that biopsy shows no proteinuria, no red cells, no white cells, no casts. When it's active, what this is saying is that there's something wrong in the glomerulus. There's new proteinuria. The cells are dysmorphic because they're allowing RBCs through freely. And finally, WBC casts. So now that we've established we have AKI with active UA, we're suspecting glomerular disease, what's the stepwise process for how to certainly establish we know we're dealing with possible GN? Well, it involves a microscope. And it involves, first, quantifying proteinuria with a spot-PC ratio, looking at the urine with that microscope to see if there's dysmorphic cells there, and examining to see if there's casts. Acute glomerulonephritis can then be classified into two separate categories. First, is the complement low? Or second, is the complement normal? On the low complement arm, we have renal-limited diseases and systemic diseases that can cause this. With renal-limited, we have membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis, which is usually secondary to hepatitis, lupus, sarcoid, and heme cancers. And second, post-strep GN, which, weirdly enough, is what they think Mozart actually died from at a young age. When it comes to the systemic diseases that we're dealing with, first is lupus, second endocarditis, and three is cryoglobulinemia. When it comes to normal complement, we can again subdivide into systemic and renal diseases. Starting with the systemic arm, the first three on this list are considered the ANCA vasculitides, granulomatosis with polyangiitis, microscopic polyangiitis, and eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangiitis, formerly called churg strauss these are the pulmonary renal syndromes that we're used to hearing about. Next on the list is good pasture, another pulmonary renal syndrome. And then lastly is henoch schonlein purpura. Now, the renal versions of this are the same as the systemic, except there's no other involvement in the lungs or in the petechia and the legs in the version of henoch schonlein So if someone has pausy immune GN, you're basically saying it looks like they have anca vasculitis in the kidney, but nothing wrong with the pulmonary tree. Anti-GBM disease, likewise, is good pasture, limited to just the kidney. And if you have henoch schonlein purpura in just the kidney, it's referred to as IgA nephropathy. So now that we know what all these diseases are, we know what labs we need to order. Of course, complements, hepatitis serology, ASLO, cryo and rheumatoid factor, because rheumatoid factor is a cryoglobulin, ANA, anti-DS DNA, blood cultures times three for the endocarditis piece, especially if it's suspected, 
and then Anka. So now we know if you suspect acute GN, what to order. But the question still remains. I thought there's something about crescents when it comes to glomerulonephritis. Well, look at Bowman's capsule. And look at the capillary tufts. Now, what happens if there's inflammation in there and things start to escape through? Well, the body will form a scar where things are escaping where they're not supposed to. And that scar takes the shape of a crescent. Any of the things that cause glomerulonephritis can cause crescents. So it's not good to memorize it that way. So finally, in summary, acute glomerulonephritis presents with hypertension, dysmorphic red cells, red cell casts, proteinuria, with or without AKI. You can only know if the urine is active with a UA, and you need to commit that algorithm of the GN diseases to memory. And stop memorizing buzzwords. Trust me, it's much easier if you just can write that thing out from the top of your head. So hopefully, after watching this, what was once a nightmare now has turned into nothing but a sweet dream. A dream of glomerulonephritis. Thank you for watching the video, and as always, I'm open for more topics. Leave some suggestions.